Honestly, not finding the highest paying buyer in the market is you just being lazy. Yeah. You're just being lazy and you're leaving money on the table. Okay, what could you sell it for in like 30 years? I want my, I want the most aggressive. So a realtor will pay for the, themselves. They'll sell it faster, they'll sell it for a higher price than you would on your own. Welcome back to video three in this masterclass series with Joe McCall. Joe, hey. it's awesome to do this. We have really gone into a lot of stuff so far in the first two videos. Hope you guys are following this. I would recommend in sequence because that's how we're giving this information. Joe's breaking down step by step and we're actually getting on the computer. He's showing you the exact tools, everything he does to do this business where you can flip land for huge profits. Super fun. So in the first video, we did like a big overview. Second video, we talked about how to find the best markets mm -hmm. from like looking at a state down to counties, yeah. right? And now what we're gonna do, this might feel a little bit out of order, but it's really not. We're gonna dive into the buyer. So we're not gonna worry about sellers yet, meaning where do we find the deals? We're gonna get to that and how to analyze the deals. But we, Joe feels strongly and I agree with him that we really wanna keep focusing on where the action is, who are the buyers, what are they doing, where, what are they paying, and understanding where we find them first. Mm -hmm. Right, Joe, and why is that so valuable? Why do we wanna find the buyers first before we ever start talking to sellers or making offers? It just makes everything so much easier, right? And if you're having a hard time finding who these buyers are and what they're buying, you might not be in a good market because yeah. you, you just wanna, we're just following the demand. We're following the money, um, you know, it's, it's just fundamental wholesaling 101. You yeah. find out where the demand is and you go out and you fulfill it. Yeah. It's, it's business 101, isn't it? Right, I mean, wholesaling, people don't do this as often as I thought or would think they would, but what we really are doing now in our house, when I say wholesaling, I'm talking about our house business, is we literally do the same strategy you're gonna teach on this video where we wanna find where the most active cash buyer activity is happening and pick that as a place to go look yeah. for deals. Mm -hmm. Knowing that when we get a deal, we've got you know a lot of buyers that are gonna be hot on those deals. And, and doesn't it help too when you're actually, you've got a deal and now you're calling the buyers up and uh, you know what they already want. Yeah. You know what they're already are buying and then you talk to them and say, hey, I got another deal that's similar to what you just bought six months ago in this area, would you like another one? Yeah, yeah, perfect, right? And I mean, you know, you're also not, because I have so many good buyers, um, I'm not chasing them, right? So from a positioning standpoint, when you're talking to buyers, they know, I'm, I've let them know, hey, I've got a bunch of people here that I think would be interested in this deal, but I'm calling you first mm -hmm. to see if you might be interested in it. So I'm just planting the little seed to let them know I've got other people here, right? And some of the marketing that we're gonna be talking about, um, it's a great way to get the phone to ring. So you can either do cold call them, call, call these buyers, you can also send little simple pieces of direct mail to get them to call you. Yeah, which is one of your favorite techniques, yeah. which we'll talk about a little bit. But Joe's actually gonna get back on the computer and screen capture and show you exactly how to find these buyers and where the highest concentration of these buyers is. And we're even gonna be able to see like what they're doing, what they're paying, why, why they're the ideal buyers for this business. Yeah. All right, so again, we're looking here at um, Land watch, you know, I, I picked Florida because Florida is a hot market. And uh, you can see the most popular region is the Southwest region, mm -hmm. which is the Fort Myers. We're gonna look at that. Um, these are some other good regions where we've done a lot of deals in. But uh, Lee County is a hot market, right? Um, I'm just gonna pick Lee County. And if you go into Land Watch, you can kind of see, there's 5,600 listings and you can go look at them to see kind of, and this is another thing too, that it's always good to see what your competition is doing, right? And uh, you can see a lot of these, these are land investors, some of them are realtors, um, but see what they're doing and how they're advertising these properties. And, mm. and this can be a little intimidating to a new investor thinking, oh no, I'm gonna be up and competing against David Hans from US Best Land and <laughs> I can't, but it's actually encouraging to me when I see a guy like David Hans, he's probably spending over $1,000 a month to get these premium listings on Landwatch right now, mm. right? So that's a good sign for me, that's telling me this is a good market. This guy is willing to spend that much money. And maybe, Jerry, I can partner with David Hans mm. on a land deal, yeah. right? Let's say I get a deal and I can, I can then message him and say, hey, David, I think I got a deal here. Would you be interested in partnering with, with me on it? I already got it under contract. Or even buying it. Would you be interested in buying it? Or you've already got the buyers. Mm -hmm. What if you bring a buyer and we'll just split it 50-50? Yeah. I've done a ton of deals that way where I partner with other local wholesalers that are already 
have the cash. They already know the title mm -hmm. companies. They already know all the paperwork. They already have the buyers. And I just bring them a deal and partner with them on it and split it 50-50. So this is showing us a huge database of active land deals for sale. Right, right, right. But right now, we're going to come back to this maybe in another video. That's not the focus right now. Yeah. So I want to... We're not ready yet for that, are we? No, no, no. So we're going to dive deeper into the county to see where all the activity is. And prop wire. Prop wire. Prop wire. How do they get prop wire, Jerry? Well, uh, we can put a link below and you can get into prop wire for free. Okay. And then it's free. So when we say free, if you haven't heard me talking about prop wire yet, it's, you know, there are 157 million records nationwide and it's absolutely free to search and download as many records as you want. When you came out with this, I was like, what is Jerry doing? <laughs> like, what is he... Are you crazy? Is he crazy? Yeah. I mean, this stuff is I'm either not... crazy or brilliant. One of the time will tell. <laughs> These leads aren't free to you. No, no, it's very expensive to have this software. Yeah, it's crazy. Not just in the data, but also in the development oh. to to the to create the user interface. Yeah. So I'm a big fan of PropWire. Thank I'm not you. just saying that to Brown knows you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this is insane. Like people. If you haven't gotten this yet, I don't know. Yeah, it's really cool when you were telling me how you're using it. Right. And so yeah. you guys are going to see firsthand how he's using this for land deals. So let's go to Lee. Lee County, Florida, right here. It's going to bring me down. This is near Fort Myers. So mm -hmm. if you were to zoom out, it's kind of the southwestern part of Florida, right? And there's 50, 528,000 results. So I'm just going to go here to property types. I'm going to select land. And there are 139,000 vacant lots that you have data here. Um, I want to know, though, who, who are the people that are actually buying these lots recently, okay? Yeah, remember, guys, we're not looking for deals right now. Right. We're looking at who the buyers are. So, yeah, I'm going to click on Advanced right here, Property Filters. Um, we're not worried about year built, and that's something else we could do. If we could look, We could say, all right, show me all the new home construction, mm -hmm. but let's skip that for now. We're going to go to owner filters. Um, we're going to do minim property owned. I, I like doing this. I want to find somebody who already owns like five other properties. Now these could be houses or land, but what this means is they're more of a serious active investor. It's not a mom and pop who right. bought one deal. It's not right. a mom and pop. You could do properties own 10 if you wanted, mm -hmm. right? And then financial filters. We want to look to see the last sale date. So I like to just go back three months. If you put 10, you might want to go back further. But Okay, let's go back six months. So since they've bought a vacant lot um, since November 1, 22, as we're recording okay. this, and they own 10 other properties already. So now, they're a real legit investor, yeah. right? Sometimes my best buyers for houses are the out-of-state buyers yeah, too, yeah. right? Because they pay more generally. So... But I'm not going to worry about out of state right now. Anything else that we could do with this? Um, I think this is good. Uh, now you could do, um, sometimes I do total value less than a certain amount, but mm. let's not worry about that. Save close. Again, this is last six months. There's 2,000 properties here. Now it's not 2,000 different buyers. There's 2,000 vacant lots that have sold in the last six months mm -hmm. To somebody that owns more than 10 Currently properties. owns more than 10 right. properties. Okay. Right. Let's just look at some of these. This is one. Um, we can go see the, the information about the properties. 10,000 square foot. This is obviously vacant lot. That's about 0.23 acres. Okay. It's a little less than a quarter acre. We can see all kinds of good information about the thing here. Now, this is more, more advanced, but sometimes I take that APN number and I have other tools that I use to give me more information on the topography like if you're in some areas it's good to look at like is it on does it have road access you know does it have so you would google that because that's the parcel number right yeah so yeah. sometimes i'll go into the county records or the okay. county mapping Take, stuff yeah so a lot of good information here by the way um one of the things we'll talk about when it comes to finding sellers is tax delinquents so in prop wire mm. you can go and say show me all the people that have owned land for over 10 years that have been laid on their taxes in the last couple of years. Yeah, let's make sure we get to that when oh, we cover sellers. That's, that's yeah. awesome. All right, so anyway, we can see somebody owns this prop that just bought it recently. Um, you can see it's an LLC based out of Medley, Florida. Look this at this. This is a huge, look at that. They own 167 properties. So again, guys, he clicked on the owner tab. Right and a new feature we have in PropWire is it'll tell you all the properties they own. Yeah, should we skip tracing? Okay, so, um, 
you got all these phone numbers. This will yeah. be blurred out on the video. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you two. Yeah, but right now, guys, we're looking at actual mobile landline numbers for World Rent LLC. You, you skip trace LLCs? Yeah, we'll skip trace LLCs. Now, you're Come now, on. guys, be patient with this because or understanding because LLCs are a lot harder. So your your hit rates are lower. Oh right? yeah, because totally it's that's way normal. Harder, yeah. Wh whoever you do your skip no tracing one, with, no one's a hundred percent right. Okay. So bam, look at this though. You can see these guys buying condo, they're buying land, multifamily land, 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 land. A lot of land, land. Deals. See all that right there? Land. Do you think maybe if I called this guy up, <laughs> I said, hey, um, now you may, I don't know how you, those phone numbers, does it go to the owner? I don't know. This yeah. Sometimes with the, the LLCs like this, I, I like to send my letter, and I'll, we'll talk yeah. about that in a minute here, but like that way it goes to... They probably have an office. This, these mm -hmm. guys probably have 10 people in their office or whatever. Probably going to get a secretary or somebody. But sometimes letters work well. I still call them, but I'm just going to say, hey, I see you bought a property here recently. Are you looking for more deals? Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, so this just tells me now. Now, Joe, would you do that call before or after you actually have a deal? That's a good question. Um, it depends. Okay. Now, I'm kind of already experienced. I know if I get a deal in Lee County it's gonna be easier for me to sell the mm -hmm. deal, right? I, I can find 10 realtors that I can call that will list it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I know what the numbers are, but sometimes if you're in a new market, it is better to call in advance and talk to some of these buyers and find out what are you looking for. This goes back to the age old debate, you know, do you get a buyer's list first and then make offers or whatever? I tend to just, for me personally, I feel like it's such a better use of time if I call these guys and I have a deal to talk about. Yeah. Because if oh, you call, yeah. I feel like if I call them and I said, hey, you know, if I find another deal, will you buy it? Well, yeah, look what they're, they got 167 yeah, properties. Of yeah, course yeah. they're gonna buy it if it's a deal. They're gonna tell you, yeah, bring me a deal when you get one. That's what they're gonna say. So yeah, I agree <laughs> with that, right? Because especially when you're talking to realtors too. Yeah. Like if, hey, I got a deal and um, I'm thinking about buying it. I'm yeah. thinking about selling it. I want to have, have it under contract. Mm -hmm. I'm in due diligence right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calling to see if you might be interested in this. Now you're having a high level conversation with yeah. somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, I did this the other day on one of my videos and I was just calling, uh, I think I mentioned this in another video, but I called this guy, he was driving in New York, you know, and I said, hey, I see you bought this property recently and are you looking to buy more? And he's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was a weird conversation because I yeah. didn't have anything to yeah, give him, weird. right? Yeah. So, yeah, you know. Uh, it's I would say this, if you're brand new and you just want that peace of mind, knowing that you've got five, 10, 20 buyers that said yes, fine, but, but honestly, I always feel this way. This is my, my honest belief about this, and it's, it goes against what a lot of other people teach. I feel like if you, if you get a good deal, if you actually have a good deal, finding a buyer for that deal is the easiest part. Yeah, exactly. Right? Just get, go f focus on getting a good deal. Now, we're reverse engineering right now, so we're gonna, find, we're gonna show you where the buyers are at, um, but there's no right or wrong to that. You could, you could actually call them, ask them, hey, if I find a deal, what's your criteria? And yeah. now you can kind of like, I got a built-in buyer, now I'm gonna go find them exactly what they want. Nothing wrong with that strategy, works really well, a lot of people do it. Yeah. Just decide which way you wanna go with it, you know? Well, yeah, so now you see the cool thing here is you see these pockets of a lot of dots. Yeah. But here we are though, We're in, we know this is a hot county, and we know these are a list of buyers that have bought a lot of property in the last, well they bought one property in the last six months and they own a lot of property already. So the chances of them wanting to buy another deal is really, really high. So we're just kind of giving ourselves a shortcut here, aren't yeah. we? And now we can see the hot areas. This is a hot area right here. This is a hot area over here. Yeah, because you're looking at the dots on the map to mm -hmm. see where the concentration, because look down below here. Now that might be outside the zip, the county right there, maybe. Well, right? Yeah, maybe, but, but I like know. I do get some deals in the areas like this uh -huh. and it just then, I just gotta be a little more careful, right? Yeah. Like, I wanna be a little more conservative on my offer if I'm buying on this side of the highway. Right. There might be a lot of wetlands here, maybe mm -hmm. it's floodplains, maybe it's just Whereas a bunch like, of agriculture. Look at that pocket up there by River Hall, you know, like you see a whole bunch of concentrated, yeah. and then look over there at Cape Coral. A lot of good activity. Oh my here. gosh, tons of action. So you could go and click one by one, click mm -hmm. them all, but there's cool tricks here, like you could just select this. Oops, I'm sorry, let me go, let me go check, it. Yeah. check all. 2,000 of them, yeah. and you can export them into mm -hmm. a spreadsheet. And then Click for, on that, we can show, we, we don't have to go all the way yeah. through. So now these, click the drop down arrow right here. Oh, and you can skip trace them all too, right? Yeah. 
So that's cool. But what, what, what I'm going to show you guys in a minute here, another trick using another website, like we could dive down even deeper to say, all right, which zip codes yeah. in this county are those active buyers buying? Because some of these counties, when I go to pull a list to mail, I'll get 30,000. Because it's a huge county. It's a huge county. Lots of vacant lots there, you know. So How many zip codes might be in a big county? Uh, 20, 30. Yeah. So what if you could find the top five zip codes in that county? So if you think about it, if you if you drill down, you would start state, county, zip. Yeah. Then what, city? Well, just that's it. State, then yeah. county, then zip code. Yeah, because some cities might have multiple right. zip codes, right? So, so okay. in, some, in some counties, though, you know, I don't do the zip code analysis. Mm -hmm. I just... You know, I, I mail the whole county mm -hmm. um, because it's not that big of an area. But a, a county like this, a lot of activity. I want to know who are, oh, do you recognize this name, D.R. Horton? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> you want to know who are these big dogs that are buying, what are they buying, what zip codes are they buying in? And so you could export all of this into a spreadsheet and go really deep into, mm -hmm. all right, well, you could go into and you could say, show me all the ones that D.R. Horton has bought. What, what zip codes are they buying all their deals in? And what price yeah. per square foot or price per acre are they buying these lots mm -hmm. in? Um, now you've got a more educated idea of yeah. what they're looking for. So when you do get a deal, you can call them up, send them a letter, and say, hey, I got this. Are you, would you be interested in it? So um, Very cool. This look, is, they bought another one, so they're definitely yeah. buying like crazy over there. Very active. They're a home builder, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Big home, nationwide home builder. Um, cool. Now, one of the things I like to use is list source, Okay. List source is owned by CoreLogic. Now, I you can get a free account with them. I'm not saying to go there and buy them. It's gonna, it's cost. It's actually kind of ridiculous how expensive it is. But one, there's a free thing I like to do in here that will help find and narrow down into like a table the top zip codes in a certain. So this county. is your free hack on List Source to yeah. get the zip code data. Yeah. So walk us through this. It's All really right. cool. So I'm just gonna log into my free account, and when you. When you go in here, you can figure this out too. So I'm gonna go right here to create your own. Now I'm gonna go through this fast, so just pause, pause the video and or you know, and go back if I need to, right? I'm gonna go pick my state, or I'm gonna do county, rather. I'm gonna pick my state, Florida. And I, we were in- um, Lee, weren't we? Lee County, what just happened to my, okay, here we go, cool. Let's go to uh, Lee County, add it in there. So you'll see there's 448,000 property records. So let's narrow it down a little bit more. I'm gonna go here to property. I wanna do property type. And I'm gonna choose um, vacant land. Bring that over. So there's 103 vacant lots in the records there. I wanna do last- 103,000. 100, yeah, 103,000. I'm gonna do last market sale date. Let's go last three months. 1800 and um, then I could, there's something else I'm forgetting here. Well, it's good enough for now. Um, so now you can see here, we got Lee County. Oh, last no markets. preference, right? Oh, that's, yeah, that's next. Okay, that's oh, next. okay. And uh, then I'm gonna go here to options. Owner occupied, I don't care if it's absentee owner or owner, well, you know, yeah, I don't care right now, right here. Corporate owned, I'm going to say no preference. Corporate Meaning owned, it doesn't matter if it's individual or an LLC. Right. Okay, so put no preference. Now you could do only, but I just want to know which, what are the zip codes in Lee County where most of the vacant lots have been purchased in the last three months? Okay. So I've got a list now of 3,900. I'm going to pretend like I'm going to buy it and I'm going to click purchase list right here. And then I'm going to purchase or click purchase partial list right here. Then I'm going to go to custom selection. And then I'm going to click from the drop down zip code. Now, by the way, you could do the same thing. You can go to the county, but that's another thing. All right, so bam, here I have now a table of all 30, there's 34 zip codes. In and, Lee County. In Lee County. And here is a table of all of the zip codes and the number of transactions. So you could export this right now into a spreadsheet if you wanted. Or you could just, sometimes what I do is I'll just go and I'll copy and paste everything. Oops and bring it over into a spreadsheet. Or you can just get a pen and paper, yeah, old school. and write down the top three or something. So yeah, look here, uh, 33974. Has 848. 848. Uh, 33972. That's 
three three nine nine three is six zero five. You scroll up. Those are the top. Those ones are the top ones. three. So, do you think maybe uh-huh. if I found a deal in three three nine nine three, three three nine seven four, three three nine seven two, do you think I might be able to sell it? <laughs> That's your hottest zip code. Yeah. So now I've got the whole state, the whole country, down to one state, down to one county. Down to three three zip zip codes. codes. This is the laser focused. Instead of like spray and pray marketing, I want to dive deep. So if you have a limited marketing budget, you know, instead of sending postcards to everybody in that county. 10,000, you know. Or it's, you know, in Lee County, it's going to be over 30,000. Yeah. Why not go down deeper into the zip codes and uh, and then contact? So that's all you have to do here. You can export this, but this little list source trick it's just a way to find the hot zip codes in. Let's go to back to PropWire and look up 33974. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go back Which to, was the highest one? Yeah, that was okay. number one. And uh, let's just start all over again. I'm gonna reset all filters. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the zip code up here, 33974. It's gonna drill me down into that little area. Doesn't look very big, but there's a lot of activity there. Yeah. All property types, land. All right, then I go to advanced and uh, owner filters. And maybe I could do maybe three, five. five. Okay. Oh, let's do five. Uh, so yeah, they, let's do five. So they own five, at least five properties. Yeah, and then the last sale date, six months. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six. Let's just pick the first. Save and close. And right here, there's 435 results. That's not 435 buyers. That's 435 transactions in the last six months from somebody that has, owns already five other properties. These are active buyers who are saying, please bring me some deals, <laughs> right? Please, I want to give you some money. Bring me some deals. It's, it's good to know these guys, isn't it? And then from here, yeah, you just let's click on the first one. You can see that... Uh, it's a vacant lot, obviously. Yeah. The owner, Calvin Walker. Again, we weren't saying only corporates. We we're yeah. saying anybody. So we could Look skip. Look at this. But this is str- this is. So he owns nine properties. Yeah. Even though they're multifamilies, but he's also got some land. So this is a guy who's buying land right now, maybe to build yeah. some multifamilies mm-hmm. on, right? Yeah. Um, so you contact him, call him up, send him a letter. Let's look at this one here. Now this might be. Somebody that wants to build a home. Mm-hmm. Looks like an infill lot, maybe. Um, this is another individual owner. Some yeah. of these guys, you know, they live in that county. A lot of them live outside of the county. One thing to keep in mind is this property's deeded in his name, but the way that we get the properties owned is by their yeah. address. That's really important, isn't it? Because they might have, a, some of those nine might be in entities, who knows? Yeah, sometimes people buy multiple properties and every property is in a different LLC. That's me. That's yeah. how I do it. Yeah. Which makes it hard. I like that because it's like asset protection. Sure. But not really because I use, I'd have to change up my mailing addresses, which who does that? <laughs> this Ricardo, smart investor, he's got a bunch of land deals that he's bought recently. Yeah. You know, and you can see the zip codes that he's buying in and you can see what he's paying. For. Well, I mean, it gives you value. So it gives you an idea of his price point. Right. Look at these 12, 12, 8. Well, you can open them up. Like if you click this button, it opens up a new tab for that property and you can go to history and you can see what he bought it for. Oops, I just had it there. You can see he bought that property for Uh $16,500, right? So now you're researching your buyer. Mm -hmm. Because look at this. Let's say that you had a deal. Let's say you found a deal and it was near this one. Yeah. And you're like, well, what should I offer? Uh, Or let's say you get that deal for five grand. Well, what price should I take it to Ricardo at? Well, he just paid 16,500. Yeah. Yeah. What if I offered him a deal for 15 grand? Yeah. Do you think you might be like, oh yeah, that's a good deal. I bought my last one for 16. Right. So this is, it's so easy to come up with offers now. Yeah. If you know what these guys are You're not guessing anymore. You got real data. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know what, and we'll cover this in another video, but when you're, when you're getting in here and you're seeing, you know, who, now we know these zip codes. So when I get a deal under contract, I can go in and when you look at the comps right here, and we'll look at this later, you're going to see all of the other vacant lots that have sold there in the last Mm -hmm. six months. And so you can contact those people, but you can also contact the, um, the ones that have, are buying a lot of them in that zip code. From your list. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, there's so many cool things about this and, and PropWire is a great tool because it's free because I still can't understand, 
But um, <laughs> and and oh, and then when we get into uh, finding deals, you have the realtor's contact information in here. Yeah, your... right there. In fact, one feature we added recently was when you download that list, yeah, it pulls that too. So it's oh, in it your does. List. Yeah, yeah. So we're it's... gonna have to wait for the next video. I think we're gonna be talking about that, aren't we? How to find the sellers to yeah. contact them, but. You know, this is, you know, can I show them the letter that I like to send? Yeah, so so now let's, to wrap up, let's talk about your top ways of um, contacting oh, yeah, good, contacting right. these yeah, cash yeah. buyers. Because right, so one thing, right through PropWire, you can skip trace. You yeah. can individually skip, so we could just skip that one guy. Or you could skip trace the all thousand. Or you could do the whole, how big was the list? Uh, 435. 435. So show real quickly, you would just you select all of them. And now, why you at two? Tw it might have well, doubled your list. Well, let me let me re let me remove that list. Okay. So you can build the list of buyers, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, as you go. Yeah. So now we're going to select all. Yep. So it's four thirty five. Click on it. It's going to bring you the list. You do the drop down, and it would skip and download. Which what it'll do yeah. is it'll skip it, give you the whole list and all the. And by the way, one cool thing about skip tracing is we only charge if it's a uh, if it returns a number. Right. Some skip tracing, they'll just charge you for the whole thing, right. and then you know thirty percent don't come back. So then you you know you upload them into whatever dialer you're using. Yeah. Um, sometimes I just prefer to call them from my phone. Me too. You and know? text from our phone. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So what do you say to them? Right. Like you, yeah. you call them, you text them. Uh, I would just say, first of all, I never, I don't like the fake it till you make it. Sometimes, right? Sometimes just being honest with mm -hmm. buyers is the best thing. You mm -hmm. know. So I call these buyers up and I say, hey, listen, um, I'm an, I'm a new investor in the area. Just kind of learning the ropes a little bit. Sometimes I'll I teach my students to say this. I just be honest and say, listen, I bought some late night infomercial course, you know, and I'm just getting just I watched getting started. this guy Jerry Norton on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, and I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed, a little nervous right now. Just be brutally yeah. honest. You'd always be truth seekers and truth givers. Yeah, right. And uh, so they're going to respect you more for that. Totally. And you just say, listen, um, I've been doing a lot of marketing in this area, and I've got I'm getting a lot of leads house leads or land leads, whatever it is. And uh, I'm just calling some active investors that I know in the area. And I'd, I'd like to know if maybe I could add you to my buyers list because I'm getting a lot of leads, mm -hmm. right? So you're showing them that you're actually doing some work and mm -hmm. you're legit. You're not mm -hmm. going to be wasting their time. And uh, This goes back to if you're contacting buyers to buyers. build a list prior to getting a deal. Yes. Okay. So it's like, hey, I'm doing a bunch of marketing and I'm getting a bunch of leads and I think they're they look like really good deals. I see you've bought five or so in this area. I'm just wondering, can I add you to my list um, so that when I do find a good deal, I can send it to you? What do you think they're going to say? They're going to say, well, heck yeah. Yeah. Do you then find out their buy box? Right. So then yeah. it's like, hey, can you tell me, I, I, I want to make sure I don't send you any junk. Yeah. So can you just maybe tell me real quick, like what would be a deal I could send to you that will you know, make you drop yep. everything and, and come and look at it or buy it, you know? Yeah. And those Where are you buying? What types of lots do you look for? Yeah. You know, what's your what's your strategy so I yeah. can bring you exactly what you want? Right. And so, again, just being honest with them right up front, mm -hmm. not trying to play some game or not pretending that you have a property that you don't, right? But just, like, asking them questions. Now, yeah. not all of them are going to be interested in telling you, but sometimes, again, playing that honesty card where you're mm -hmm. just like, Hey, I'm new. I bought a late night infomercial. I watched some of these YouTube videos and um, they're going to appreciate that yeah. kind of thing, right? You know, I love that, Joe, because like a lot of times when I do my live calls and I record it, I'll, I'll say things like, yeah, I've been flipping houses for almost 20 years and blah, blah, blah. And people will be like, well, Jerry, I can't say that. I'm like, well, no, I can. So I'm going to leverage that to my benefit. But you say what you are. Yes. You know, like it doesn't matter. No. And I don't pretend I'm in the market either. I, yeah. You know, hey, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. We, I'll do the same thing. I'll say, you know what? I actually am out of state, but uh, I'm really excited to do deals in this market. Yeah. I don't. I don't know a lot of people yet, but you know, I'm calling you. So just yeah. be brutally honest. Nobody care. What will hurt you more is if you're not something. You're being something you're not. Mm -hmm. That will come through. You're not going to build rapport. Yeah. If they have doubts in their mind if, of your trustworthiness, they're they're going to really second guess working with you. Well, they can smell that insincerity from a mile away. Yeah. So you just gotta be real and honest. Yeah. And, uh, but I let them know um, I'm getting a lot of leads. Like I'm looking, mm -hmm. what's, in, what's in it for them? What do they want? They want deals, they wanna make money. Yeah. So whenever I'm even talking to realtors, it's the same thing. I, how can I help you grow your business and help you make more money? Yeah. Well, um, that's what I say. And, and uh, 
I, you know, if I have a deal, I tell them about the deal, I see you're an active investor. But it does help when you kind of already know what they want, you already have maybe a little established relationship with them. But you don't have to do this, right? You don't have to cold call these buyers out of blue. It does help when you have a deal under contract. I look at some of the land deals I do, and I don't do any of this because my exit is to relist, take it down and relist. So if you have the ability to buy that $5,000 lot or $10,000 land, whatever, if you could buy it, take it down, do you believe, would you agree that a relist on the MLS is probably gonna get you your highest paying buyer? Oh yeah, so 100%. And Because and you're my, gonna get more eyeballs. Yeah, so my, my we, we talked about first contacting the buyers first, then we talked about sending them a letter. The other thing I love to do is call realtors. So I will go in and it's really easy to find if you have a particular deal um, and, and we could show this if we wanted to or maybe in another video, but you just kind of zoom out and you can see- On where? Redfin. Oh, on Redfin, yeah. yeah. And I'll say, all right, show me all of the recent solds in the last three months. Just land. Just land deals. And then you can go in and you can see who the realtors are and uh, you can Google them, find them, or PropWire gives you their information. Mm -hmm. And you can contact them. And I, my conversation with the realtor goes something like this. Um, hey, Jim, my name is Joe. Uh, I'm looking for a realtor to represent me. Those are, that's, I'm thinking again in terms of... They're going to listen now. Yes. You I got their attention. What do they care about? Yeah. They care about money and listings, commissions, and stuff like that. I don't have an agent representing me right now in the area. I'm looking for a listing, a realtor to help me list a property. Um, now, I'm an investor from St. Louis... Um, but we're starting to move, we're starting to do deals here in this county. Um, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? That's kind of how I started, right? I let them know I don't have an agent representing me. I'm looking for an agent to represent me. I've got a deal on a property I'm going to buy. Is I, that what you I tell got, I, So yeah. Then the next yeah. thing is, I got a deal I'm thinking about buying. Yeah. Right. I got a deal I'm thinking about buying, um, and I I pay real generous commissions. I'll tell them you know after we do some pleasantries and exchanges back and forth. I say, listen, I'm looking for a realtor to help me maybe buy this thing and sell it again, I pay real generous 10% commissions. Now with land, it's different than houses. You know, with, with houses you're making, you're paying five to 6% commissions. With land, I'll pay eight to 10% because these are things that we're selling for, for 30,000 bucks. So know. the pr the work's the same, but the price point's so low right. to get their attention, you gotta pay them a little higher commission. And I, I, I'm, I'm only working with realtors that have already sold land recently too because so, you search just land right. agents yeah and we can show them how to do that here in a minute yeah it's easy so but then now i got their attention um i'm i don't have an agent representing me and i'm willing to pay 10 percent commissions on both sides of the transaction the buy and the sell now that's a lot of money granted but i'm telling you when you list properties on the mls you take it down you relist it or whatever it pays for itself you can't afford not to use a realtor in my opinion because now you get it on the largest marketplace. You know, Zillow, you could do for sale by owner on Zillow, but do you even know how to find for sale they by owner? They separate the tab, so it's hard. And nobody yeah. clicks that other tab no, to go to the people don't Fizbos. know that. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you get the largest marketplace. You get now somebody who's working for you, who's your boots on the ground. You can go take pictures. I've got a lot of deals that have fallen through because the realtor will go look at it and say, you can't tell from the satellite, Google Maps, but like it drops off like a cliff. There is road access, but... You'd have to like bring in heavy equipment to cut in a, a driveway, and this. so they do your boots on the ground market right. research. They go yeah. look at it and they say this is good, and and they'll tell me what they think I could sell it for, and I always go back and say, well, okay, what could you sell it for in like thirty days? Mm -hmm. I want my I want the most aggressive. So a realtor will pay for the, themselves. They'll sell it faster. They'll sell it for a higher price than you would on your own. So it's not just the exposure. It's the it's the due diligence that the agent will do. Yeah. Because they're going to know the area. They're going to know about that. Land. They'll go look at it. They'll tell you what's going on. It's that. Because you could just go on brokerless. I've done that before. We've done a lot of deals on okay. brokerless.com. Brokerless.com. Broker, L-E-S-S.com. It's a flat fee of like 150 bucks. Yeah. We've done that a lot. But still, like, I want a realtor that will go take pictures of the property for me. Um, who'll be more active and, and you'll uh, gladly pay the commissions because yes they'll be more active in taking the calls sh you know maybe working the deal putting a sign yeah in the yard signs work really well believe yeah. it or not for vacant land mm -hmm. signs work really good um, but then also though they know the resources in the area like they know the good title companies and you be honest with these agents and you tell them I'm a wholesaler right like and mm -hmm. I'm do you know any good investor friendly creative real estate investor friendly title companies. And and they may 
also have a buyer for that property. It might already have buyers. So they're, they're going to help me with kind of what I need to do. And when um, they may already know somebody else. We'll talk about this in another video. When you're calling agents, I always ask them, do you have any other properties? Do you, have, yeah. do you know anybody else who's got a, something they want to sell? What I love about the agent model on the exit too is it doesn't cost you anything up front, right? You're going to pay it out of the sale, yeah. which then assuming you make a profit, it comes right out of closing versus other types of marketing like direct mail. You're paying all that up front to then have no guarantee you get a buyer. And you only pay that agent if they bring you a buyer. If and when it closes, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think it's crazy not to. Yeah. So now that you've okay. now you know you if you get a deal, um, <clears throat> you can work on the process of closing it. But still, yeah. I don't close on the deal until I know I've got some good buyers. Yeah, yeah. So I've got three months. Sometimes I'll close if it and if it's a smoking hot deal, I'll close immediately within a few weeks. Especially if you have your buyer ready. Yeah. You I, can you can always close sooner. Yeah. You can do an assignment or whatever. Yeah. But sometimes then also. I might put it out there on the market for a couple months. Yeah. And if I'm get. getting calls, then that's good. Then I start the process of closing it. Yeah. So it's a good mix, you know. But the, the thing is, always be marketing for buyers. This is maybe a good way to wrap this one up. Right. Like, always never stop marketing for buyers for your deals. List, list building for buyers has got to be a never-ending, continual, perpetual you should process. never, never stop. Yeah. And the worst thing position somebody could be in is becoming, I don't remember who came up with this phrase, but becoming a, an employee of your buyers. That's uh, Cody Hoff, Hoff. Is it Cody? Yeah, Cody says that. You yeah. do I, not at least want, I learned it from Cody. Yeah. So you do not want to become an employee he of He calls your it buyers. a cash buyer employee, which means you have like one buyer that you take all your deals to and they dictate the price. Yeah. And now, because your job as a flipper is to find the highest paying buyer in the market, mm -hmm. which means you're constantly building yeah. and finding buyers. It's just as important to market for buyers as it is for sellers. Yeah. Always be marketing for buyers. And it could be some phone calls, you know, once a month, send out a thousand letters or postcards, you know. Yep. Always be building your buyers because sometimes buyers get fat and happy and they like, you know, um, they, they've been around the block, they've bought a bunch of deals, and uh, they're maybe not as eager or as hungry anymore as they used to Honestly, be. Honestly, not finding the highest paying buyer in the market is you just being lazy. Yeah. You're just being lazy and you're leaving money on the table. Yeah. Because there's, there's usually an outlier that will pay way more than everybody else. And if you're actively pursuing cash buyers, you find those outliers. Yeah. They, they, they kind of come to the top, right? Yeah. So, so always be marketing for buyers. Yeah. So this was a longer video, but Joe, this was phenomenal. We really covered the buyer side of this business. Finding the buyers, great great uh, screen captures on how to do that, really good conversations on marketing, so really cool. I think next we should probably talk about, do we want to talk about analyzing or finding the Let's find the sellers. Let's okay, find, find the sellers. sellers. So next we're gonna do finding the sellers, then how do we run our numbers? We, yeah. we covered a little bit, some ideas, but let's really dive into that. And then I think we're kind of putting everything together. Oh, come on. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, guys. And be sure to check out Joe's toolkit. He's every video so far, he keeps like adding <laughs> stuff to it. So, this is a really ready. comprehensive, amazing kit of all these resources that are going to help you just crush it in this business. So, that link to get that free toolkit is in the description below. Thanks again, Joe. Yeah, man. Awesome. We'll see you guys on the next video.